Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm hit, he said, and died. Whether he vainly cursed or prayed indeed, the bullets chirped in vain, 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 and the big gun guffawed. Another side, oh, mother, mother, dad, then smiled childlike at nothing, being dead. And the, my love, one moaned, love languid seemed his mood, till slowly lowered his whole face, kissed the mud. And the bayonets. And the bayonets, long teeth grinned, and rabbles of shells hooted and groaned, and the gas hissed. Savannah Stewart, and I will be reciting the poem Broken Promises by David Kirby. I have met them in dark alleys, limping, one-armed, I have seen them playing cards under a single light bulb and tried to join in, but they refused me rudely, knowing I would only let them win. I have seen them in the foyers of theaters, coming back late from the interval, long after the others have taken their seats and in deserted shopping malls late at night, peering at things they can never buy. And I have found them wandering in a wood where I too have wandered. This morning, I caught one, small and stupid, too slow to get away. It was only a promise I had made to myself once and then forgot but it screamed and kicked at me and ran to join the others who looked at me with reproach in their long, sad faces. When I drew near them, they scurried away. Even though they will sleep in my yard tonight, I hate them for their ingratitude. I, who have kept countless promises, as dead now as Shakespeare's children, you bastards, I scream, you have to love me. I gave you life. Hi, my name is Alexander Frazier and I will be reciting After Working 60 Hours Again For What Reason by Bob Hickok. The best job I had was moving a stone from one side of the road to the other. This required a permit, which required a bribe, the bribe took all my salary, yet, because I hadn't finished the job, I had no salary. So, to pay the bribe, I took a job moving a stone the other way. The official wanted his bribe, so he gave me a permit for the second job. When I pointed out that the work would best be completed if I did nothing, he complimented my brain and wrote a letter to my employer suggesting promotion on stationery bearing the wings of a raptor spread in flight over a mountain smaller than the bird. My boss, fearing my intelligence, paid me to sleep on the sofa and take lunch with the official who required a bribe to keep anything from being done. When I told my parents, they wrote to my brother to come home from university and be slapped on the back of the head. Dutifully, he arrived and bowed to receive his instruction, at which point sense entered his body, and he asked me what I could do by way of a job. 
I pointed out that there were stones everywhere trying not to move. All it took was a little gumption to be the man who didn't move them. It was harder to explain the intricacies of obtaining a permit to not do this. Just the other day, he got up at dawn and shaved, as if the lack of hair on his face has anything to do with the appearance of food on an empty table. The Cross of Snow by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In the long, sleepless watches of the night, a gentle face, the face of one long dead, looks at me from the wall, where around its head the night lamp cast a, a halo of pale light. Here in this room she died, and a soul more white never through the modern dome a fire was led to its repose, nor can in books be read. The legend of a life more, more benedite. There is a mountain in the distant west, that sun defying in its deep ravines. On its side lay the cross of snow, such as the snow, the cross that I wear upon my breast. These past 18 years, through the changing scenes and seasons, changeless since the day she died. Thank you. Hi, I'm Neely Cormick. I will be reciting Love's Philosophy by Percy Bysshe Shelley. The fountains mingle with the rivers, and the rivers... The fountains mingle with the rivers, and the rivers with the ocean. Winds. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single, all things by a law divine. In one spirit meet and mingle, why not I with thine? See the mountains kiss high heavens, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it disdained its brother. See the sunlight clasp the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What is all this sweet work worth if thou kiss not me? Hi, I'm Dan Wilkie. I will be uh, reciting Gitanjula 35 by Robin Gemoff for Cody. stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habits. Int, int, where, <laughs> oh, where the, where the mind is without fear, and the head is without fear. 
mind. Or the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my Father. Let my country awake. I'm Warren Wade, and I will be performing Break of Day by John Dunn. Tis true, tis day, what thou it be, O oh, wilt thou therefore rise from me? Why should we rise? Because twas light? Did we lie down because twas night? Love, which in spite of darkness brought us hither, should in despite of light keep us together? Light hath no tongue, but is all I. If it could speak as well, a spy. This, or the worst that it could say, that being well I fain would stay, and that I loved my heart and honor so, that I could not from him who had them go. Must business thee from hence remove? Oh, that's the worst disease of love. The poor, the foul, the false. Love can omit, but not the busied man. He which hath business and makes love, doth do such wrong as when a married man doth woo. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together in the tremendous night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gaslight, days work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool wind blows fresh on our faces, cleansing and tracing all the heat and the fumes and the footlight. Where you dance, where you dance, and I watch your dancing. Good to be here, good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight. Where you're the dancer and I the dreamer. More children? Children together. Wandering? Wandering lost in the night of mid London in miraculous April weather. Hi, I'm Don Wilkie, and I'm going to be uh, reciting uh, to the young who want to by Morris Pearson. say you have after the novel was published and favorably reviewed. Beforehand, what you have is a tedious delusion, <laughs> a hobby like knitting. Work is what you have done after the 
play is produced and the audience claps. Before that, friends keep asking you when you are going to go out and get a job. Genius is what they know you had after the th third volume of Remarkable Poems. Earlier, they accuse you of withdrawing. Ask, why don't you have a baby? Call you a bum. The reason people want MFAs, take workshops with fancy names, when all you can really learn is a few techniques, typing instructions, and somebody else's mannerisms, is that every artist lacks something to hang on their wall. Like your dentist, your optician. You may, pretty, you may be a clumsy sadist whose feelings fall into the stew, but you're a certified dentist. The real writer is one who really writes. Talent is an invention like flawed snow after the fact of fire. Work is its own cure. You have to like it better than being loved. Monster? 
hand over your firstborn son. I'm Alexander Frazier, and I will be reciting Analysis of Baseball by Mae Swenson. It's about the ball, the bat, and the mate. Ball hits bat, or it hits mate. Bat doesn't hit ball, bat meets it. Ball bounces off a bat, flies in, or thuds around dud, or it fits mate. Bat waits for ball to mate. Ball hits to take bat's bait. Ball flirts, bat's late, don't keep the date. Ball goes out, thwack to mate. Ball goes in, thwack back to mate. <laughs> ball fits mate, but not all the time. Sometimes ball gets hit, pow! When bat meets it and sails to a place where Mitt has to quit in disgrace. That's about the bases loaded. About 40,000 fans exploded. It's about the ball, the bat, the mitt, the bases, and the fans. It's done on a diamond and for fun. It's about home and it's about run. Stewart and I will be reciting Mama Said by Calvin Forbes. The slice I ate, I want it back. Those crumbs I swept up, I'd like my share again. I can still taste it like it was. The memory by itself is delicious. Each bite was a small miracle, both nourishing and sweet. I wish I had saved just a little bit. I know it wasn't a literal cake. It's the thought that counts, like a gift that's not store-bought, making it even more special, like a dream that makes you want to go back to sleep. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Mama said. I was defiant and hard-headed and answered, yes I can too. The look she gave me said, boy, I hope you aren't a fool all your life. Reciting, reciting, I find no peace by Thomas Wyatt. I find no peace 
in all my war is done. I fear and hope I burn in freeze like ice. I fly above the wind, yet can I not arise? And not and not I have and not I have that uh, that locket not nor locket no hor nor holdeth me in prison nor and holdeth me not and holdeth me not nor die of my advice and yet and yet of death of death giveth me occasion and without with, without eye and I see and well tongue I plain I desire to perish yet I ask health I love another thus I hate myself and my delight is causer of this strife. Okay, so at this time, um, we'll take about a the poems that you were that you had chosen in advance to look at, and then of course we read them and heard them from you all tonight. I wanted to ask, and I want to start with Ben. Uh, you had hands on before, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why you chose the poems that you did? Um, I, I was so intrigued. I, some of them I'd seen before and had, had read before and loved before. Some I had never heard before and was really intrigued by them. And so I just wondered, what resonated? Was it a turn of phrase? Was it a word? Was it the whole idea? What, what resonated with you that you chose the poems that you did? And then I wanted to ask you why you chose the, Mar the Marge Piercy one. She ha happens to be one of my favorite authors. And I think that she's somebody that tends to maybe resonate a little more. Um, she, she's written a lot about feminism, about, um, about being a Jewish woman. And I just wondered um, it, it, to be able to, to have her get inside your head and you get inside hers. Um, if, if anybody else wants to chime in afterward as to why you picked a particular work, I'd love to know. Well, I, I, I didn't know a little bit about Marge Pixie before coming in here. I, like, I, I knew about her uh, wolf feminism and all of her advocacy for that kind of thing. So, I mean, I respect that. I respect for, uh, her for uh, just standing up for what she believes in. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, yeah, I, I read the poem and I, I just thought it really had a nice attitude to it. Kind of had like, kind of like, uh, I don't really, uh, it's kind of like mocking tone almost. <laughs> and it, it just sounded cool. Really, really a great choice. It, it was gutsy to put yourself in, in yeah. the head of, of, of somebody yeah. on the other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any, anything to share about why a poem jumped out at you and you just had to do it? Um, personally, for I Find No Peace by Thomas Wyatt, I just really loved the complexity that was within it in the language, and I kind of like to challenge myself with that, and, you know, wanted to try to, like, perfect, like, the execution and whatnot. That's a fantastic poem. Mm -hmm. That's just a really good poem. <laughs> yeah, I love how he's like, he's, like, arguing with himself, too, which I find really interesting. <laughs> I thought you all did an amazing job. Um, I've been teaching English for 23, 24 years, and I've read a lot of these poems, and I love the personality and character you brought to the poems. They were different for me, and I've read some of them hundreds of times over, and you brought your voice to them, and that was amazing to me. I love hearing that. I love hearing that come from students. Um, my daughter did forensics when she was in elementary school, and that changed her life. And what um, Mr. McAdoo said, you're, this is like a life lesson for you. You'll be able to speak and, and present yourself in front of um, people. This is such a great experience. This is such a, this is life changing. And it's a personal thing. 
Even though it's a competition, even though you're with your peers, it's so much a personal thing. It's personal growth. So I thought all of you did a great job. As your coach, I'm personally proud of every single one of you. Um, all of you, this is your first time with the exception of one person up here. So I think it takes a lot of courage to get up and speak poetry in front of your peers and in front of an audience that you don't really know from Adam. So um, I commend you for that, guys. And I hope to see every single one of you because every single one of you deserves to be back here next year uh, competing. And I think, you know, um, that having gone through this experience now, now you know what to expect. I hope you come to Pittsburgh, see what that's all about, and uh, bring all that learning with you, and knock it out of the park next year. All right? Great. Okay, good work. Okay. All right, so, uh, to learn. So, the first runner-up is Letty Guerrero. First one up is Alex Fraser. Unfortunately, Alex uh, was late for a wrestling tournament and his bus has been out for over a half hour. So he said, Mr. Halpin, I have to go. Uh, <laughs> um, he was kind of disappointed to hear the news, but it was a close, it was a close contest. Um, oftentimes in these situations, and um, our winner can tell you this because she's been through it, uh, it comes down to accuracy. And when you make a mistake and you lose points for that, um, it's those critical points that can get you uh, a victory or a defeat. And um, this person, more than any other reciter up here tonight, was near flawless. So our winner tonight is Savannah Stewart. Look in the, in, the, in the brochure, it just says real quick, uh, for Frank O'Hara's A True Account of Talking to the Sun of Fire. And, says, and I may leave a tiny poem in that brain of yours as my farewell. I hope you take some piece of the poetry that you heard here tonight and uh, hold it with you. And for you students too, I hope that some of you, again, come back and bring these poems with you and, and bring your experience with you and, and perform strongly next year. Thank you so much for letting me have the privilege of coaching you and being able to see you grow as speakers. It's awesome. So. All right, very well, have a nice evening. Thank you, awesome. Yeah. This, book. Well, this, this one has some way to be shit. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, yes. Nice meeting you. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.